The National Research Council has just released Pathways to Exploration, Rationales and Approaches for a U.S. Program of Human Space Exploration. The committee focused on two questions. How far can mankind go in uh, beyond the Earth, and what can we discover and achieve uh, when we get there? I don't think the report addresses this very well. Rather than answering how far might we be able to go in 30 years, the report really seems to answer what do experts agree we can do in 30 years with current technology? That's a very different question. And this difference matters because if we ask wrong questions, we can get perfectly accurate answers that are counterproductive. The answers mislead us and hurt our chances of success. To understand long-term technological change, we don't ask experts in current tech because those experts will use their detailed knowledge of our current state and extrapolate forward. This misses the most important future changes. Long-term change is best understood and predicted by historians in technological change over long periods of time. Framing the issue makes all the difference in the world, and I want to get back to that. But first, I have to say this report is supposed to be a guide for U.S. leadership in human spaceflight. Leadership is what causes people to achieve what they otherwise could not. That means adopting a goal everybody agrees on already cannot be leadership. It's management by committee. With that approach, goals are set based on looking at feasibility, ensuring all risks are within what the most timid people in the group will accept. Then, good-looking reports are produced stating the obvious, that timid goals are feasible. Feasible destinations where humans can travel in space are the moon, asteroids, Mars, and the moons of Mars. Mars is the horizon goal for human spaceflight, and all international partners agree on this. Now that's pretty weak sauce. Mars is a barren, cold, dead world. The wisp of atmosphere it does have is poisonous, and this report ruefully notes there's not much enthusiasm for sending people. This is linear thinking focused on short-term capability. And that's why there's not a crumb in this report directed toward developing interstellar capability. That will require transdisciplinary advances in the future, just like there have been in the past. This crucial factor of understanding how transformative advance works is completely invisible. It doesn't exist for this committee. The best thing in the report, long-term, is probably its emphasis on international collaboration. The nation must pursue opportunities for international and commercial collaboration. It should consider including China and potentially other emerging space powers in this endeavor. Now, for that to work, the U.S. needs to be a reliable partner for international collaborations, and that's a very good goal. Unfortunately, this does not really offset the report's planning defects. The report claims only, quote, with continued development of humankind's capability for human spaceflight can goals be reached. Important developments are not continuous. They are game-changing, discontinuous, revolutionary advances that transform our basic assumptions of what's going on. Our biggest technological advance wasn't continued development of better caves to live in. It was creating fire and learning to garden. The internet didn't arise from continuous development of fax machines. Our technological advance as a species includes hundreds of thousands of transformative moments where we realize something relates in a new way we had previously no clue of, and everything changes. That's a history we should pay attention to. Today, we face the question of advancing chemical rocket technologies we know are dead ends, or do we want to develop transformative new technologies? Over and over again in situations like this, the best answer is yes. Today, the best thing is to advance current technology and foster transformative advancement. Icarus Interstellar's chief brand and culture officer, Mike Mongo, applied the principle to divisions within the Starship development community like this. Do whatever you believe will accomplish the goal of building a Starship to the best of your abilities. There was a the talk about how we need to unite. If you feel like uniting is the most important thing, then unite. And if you feel like going off and doing your own thing is the most important thing, then go off and do it. But the absolute most important thing is do it to the best of your abilities. Now, some of us in the interstellar community tried to get the committee to consider longer-term goals, 
but were completely shut down. This was particularly disappointing because refusing to establish interstellar goals went directly against the report's own findings of what, quote, space enthusiasts, scientists, and the general public want. The images of Star Trek were found to be, quote, the aspirational vision for the kind of future that should be pursued through human spaceflight. The committee was directly told what the general population and all the experts agree on, and it's the most widely known goal. When most of us think about space, we want to know if we are alone. Is there anybody out there? Is anybody out there? The astronomical community is focused now on building instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope and the European Extremely Large Telescope in Chile. The Chilean project has a primary scientific question that has in the past been a religious one. Are we alone? Is there intelligent life? And where is it? The answer is almost certainly yes. Although we can't precisely say how these instruments will ultimately triumph, we can be pretty sure these programs will find extraterrestrial life and succeed in much less than 30 years. You'd think the NRC committee would consider this, but they refused. And I say refused because the issue was repeatedly raised by interstellar advocates. It's not that they didn't know about the issue, they refused to discuss it. We need to make our voices heard more. For those of us with a broader, longer range view and more inspiring vision, this report is 200 pages of missed opportunity. Because of management by committee conservatism, the report makes no recommendations to alter the rules of the game. In fact, the general assumption that this is impossible was emphasized by co-chair Daniel. I believe if there were a secret sauce that NASA could have applied that would uh, that would ignite a different uh, level of public uh, excitement. Uh, it, it would have happened a long time ago. Um, Today, the warp drive research work of Sunny White gets global attention every time the smallest news is released. What's weird is that this publicity is easily predictable from the data for Star Trek in this report. Chairman Daniels, this is your secret sauce. This IXS Enterprise was designed by White, Star Trek contributor Michael Okuda, and digital artist Mark Rademacher. A Google of the IXS Enterprise returns nearly 200,000 hits. White's public appearances are packed. Dr. Andreas Tiziolis, writing on the Icarus Interstellar blog, calls it a starship worth fighting for. To the committee, policymakers, and NASA leadership, the secret sauce is out there. It's reaching for the stars. Don't try to con people. Don't try to sell them. Establish the inspiring goal of interstellar flight with the U.S. as first among equals and orient Mars missions and other NASA defense and Department of Energy programs and projects within a framework of learning how to reach, land, and return from distant worlds. This framework makes coping with poisonous perchlorates on Mars an advantage worth pursuing. Dr. Ian O'Neill points out on the Discovery News website what has been known for a long time. For interstellar travel to become a reality, we need to develop a propulsion technology that can travel faster than the speed of light. The Human Spaceflight Report doesn't address big changes we are certain will come about in 10 years, much less 30. Those new telescopes will identify Earth-like planets with indications of atmospheres we could breathe. Think about that. An unknown world, similar to ours, full of life. Put yourself in that future a few years from now, looking up at the night sky. You see a star in a constellation everyone in the world is thinking about every day. We know there's life there, a planet with living creatures no one has ever seen or imagined. It is a situation we are going to be in, and we should prepare for it. As we work to make that happen, here are some upcoming events you may want to follow. If you'd like to support this vlog, please click like, subscribe, and share links on media like Twitter and Facebook. This helps build our community, and if you have graphics, sound, or production skills and would like to make a difference, please contact us. Thanks for watching. Do I have the right room? I'm looking for a bucket.